The newest version of Adobe Premiere Pro came out about a month ago, and since then I've had time to work with the software and learn all the new features. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the top three new features in this latest iteration of Adobe Premiere Pro that I'm using the most. Number one is being able to increase your audio keyframes from six decibels in prior versions of Premiere Pro to plus 15 decibels past the zero mark, which is a significant difference. Before when editing audio for my client work, YouTube videos, or my video podcast, I would use this technique where I would splice or add an edit to the audio clip where the waveform is too high or low. Bring up the audio gain window, manually increase or decrease the gain, add crossfades to both ends of that clip, and then repeat that process until my mixing was done. It's a different kind of approach to leveling out a mix, and if you wanna learn more about it, I have a video explaining it thoroughly right here. But one of the main reasons I use that technique in mixing out my levels is because 6 dB for your audio keyframes is not enough headroom to just give me more level on my audio clips. Now with plus 15 dB, you can hear the difference. One way this feature could improve in future iterations of Premiere Pro is if when you move the audio keyframe up and down on the waveform, you can physically see the audio waveform go up and down, which would be amazing. Real quick, if you're enjoying this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Number two is auto reframing your sequence. If you create a lot of content for social or you're repurposing your 16 by nine videos for social platforms like TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook, then you have to be using auto reframe sequence. Before this feature, I had pre-made sequences in an asset folder that I would import every time into Premiere when repurposing highlights for social. I would then have to go clip by clip and manipulate the framing so the composition made sense in one by one, four by five, or nine by 16. That's vertical video. This process, as you can imagine, takes a long time. And when you're done with your feature pillar content, all you wanna do is hit publish and release it out into the world. You don't wanna take the time to make 18 different versions for all the different platforms under the sun. So Adobe has made the convenience of creating your micro content so much easier with auto reframe sequence. Here's how I do it. Create a duplicate of the master 16 by nine sequence you are working with. This way, any changes you do are not gonna mess up the main edit. Open up that duplicate sequence, find the section that you want to create the highlight of and delete the surrounding unnecessary clips. Once everything is nice and clean, go to sequence, auto reframe sequence. Here you have options for the square one by one, vertical four by five, which is the option you wanna choose if you wanna take up the most real estate in an Instagram feed, vertical nine by 16, which is what you would see if you were watching TikTok, Instagram stories, or IGTV, as well as what we're used to horizontal 16 by nine. If you want a complete analysis of aspect ratios and what you can do with them in Instagram, I have a thorough video explanation right here in the corner. If you know the motion on camera is slow or fast, you can tell Premiere that before it analyzes the sequence. I normally just go with default though. If you already have preset movements on some of your clips, you may want to nest the clips in order to keep those movements. Otherwise, just go with don't nest clips. Hit create and Premiere quickly analyzes your sequence, doing its best to auto reframe your clips to the provided aspect ratio. And I have to be honest, when I first saw this feature debut online, I thought it was a gimmick. I was super skeptical that it would not work as intended. But after using this feature for about a month, man, does it do a fantastic job. One little hiccup that I've found consistently, which really isn't a hiccup because it's still doing its job, is when you have two faces on camera. Premiere has to choose which one of those faces to feature in the frame, much like TikTok and the whole face tracking feature when people do that game where they're looking one way and then they turn around, like TikTok has to choose which, okay, whatever. If you don't watch TikTok, I do. You should probably check it out because man, it is addicting. But if you ever do run into any hiccups in the framing, all you have to do is highlight the clip and go manually change those keyframes, which is a lot better to do for a couple clips as opposed to a whole sequence of clips. Before I continue on to the last feature, if you are digging the content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I wanna hang out with you more. Okay, the very last feature that I've been using all the time in Premiere Pro is the capability to map the ease out and ease in temporal interpolation keyframe function to your keyboard shortcuts. If you don't know what I mean by that, let me explain because it is kind of a game changer. Before, when manipulating movement of an asset, you would create a keyframe, right click, scroll to temporal interpolation, click ease out, create another keyframe, right click, scroll to temporal interpolation, click ease in. Now you can make that even faster by just mapping that process to a keyboard shortcut. Open up your keyboard shortcuts, 
type in temporal interpolation ease. On my keyboard, I have ease out mapped to my comma and ease in mapped to my period. Now when you create your keyframes, instead of having to right click and go into the menu, all you have to do is highlight them and hit your keyboard shortcut for ease out or ease in. But wait, what if I were to tell you you could make this process even faster if you were to use my smooth object animation preset pack. It gives you drag and drop ready preset motions to get your clip, object, picture, or any asset on and off the screen in a smooth professional way. You can check it out in the description below. So in conclusion, with your audio keyframes, instead of being capped at plus six decibels, now you get plus 15 decibels. Use auto reframe sequence to completely speed up that workflow when creating micro content for your social platforms and map your temporal interpolation ease out and ease in to your keyboard shortcuts if you use those motions frequently. Let me know in the comments down below what you think Adobe should add in new iterations of Premiere Pro. I'm actually very curious to see what others have to say. Until next episode, Merce Nation. Oh, I hope you're out there living a life of abundance.